Are you serious? Are you serious? We've got breaking news out of Jordan. And, re, and uh, John F. Kerry, the Secretary of State of the United States of America, is reporting officially. He will announce tomorrow morning the resumption of the peace talks. Breaking news right out of the Jerusalem Post this morning that John F. Kerry is officially announcing that the peace process has and will begin. And so let me just share this with you. I just did a video, as you know, that Israel might agree to the pre-1967 uh, agreement. Now, I want to thank Connor Lloyd Wallace for getting this breaking information to me just now as I finished my first video this morning. Let me read to you. Uh, the report is this. U.S. Secretary of State John F. Kerry is to declare a resumption of peace negotiations tomorrow morning, Friday, July 18, 2013. According to the London-based Al Hyatt Abbas, uh, to brief the Palestinian Liberation Organization officials on the U.S. proposals ahead of decision to resume the negotiations with Israel. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is reportedly announcing that the peace process is going to begin before leaving Amman, Jordan, Friday morning, citing sources at the Palestinian embassy in Amman, Jordan. The report stated that there has been significant, I repeat, significant process uh, and progress between John Kerry and the Palestinian Authority President Maoud Abbas. Now on Wednesday evening, yesterday evening, Kerry urged Israel to carefully consider the 2002 Arab League Peace Initiative. Some of you may remember that uh, 11 years ago. In a comment that could uh, begin the initiative as becoming part of the terms of reference for restarting the Israeli-Palestinian negotiations. Quote, Israel needs to look hard at this initiative, said Kerry, which promises Israel peace with 22 Arab nations and 35 Muslim nations, or 57 nations of the world are standing and waiting for the possibility of making peace with Israel, unquote. John Kerry making bold, I mean bold, biblical statements. Something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ, folks. You got the comet Ison that's coming November 29th, be its closest point to the sun on the anniversary date. On the anniversary date of the United Nations vote on November 29, 1947, to make Israel a non-member state. And then six months later, Israel became a nation on May the 14th, 1948. Now, Comet Eisen, which I just have reports, is travel, is scientists believe started headed toward the Earth 10,000 years ago, is coming in just ahead of a four-blood moon cycle that will take place over Jerusalem in 2014 and 2015, including, in the middle of there, two full solar eclipse of the sun over Jerusalem, turning the sun dark. And the Bible says in the last days that the sun will become as black as sackcloth of hair and the moon will turn to blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. Are you listening to me? And now, these, here they are, setting up peace agreements process in just as Comet Ison's arriving, just as the four blood moons over Jerusalem's arriving, just as the two solar eclipses will be taking place. And oh, by the way, they're all happening on big, on Jewish holidays and feast days. Matter of fact, not holidays, feast days. Uh, and uh, holidays, too, the Jewish New Year. But let me just say this. 
I'm going to do a video and give you those exact dates in the next video I'm going to do because we are really all over this. This is groundbreaking. This is Daniel 9.27 without question. And Jesus even said it was one of the signs to look for. And then, he, I mean, before his return. Now listen to this. Kerry voiced confidence that he was on track toward achieving soon a resumption of peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians, saying gaps had been greatly narrowed. But here's the thing you need to understand. We have been able to narrow these gaps very significantly. Um, and, um, and so we continue to get closer, and I continue to remain hopeful that the sides can soon be able to come and sit at the same table. His meeting with Abbas in the Jordanian capital was Kerry's second in the last 48 hours, and it was to be followed, according to Palestinian officials, by a briefing on the U.S. proposals that Abbas will give to the other PLO leaders on Thursday ahead of a decision on whether they should resume negotiations with Israel. The Arab League has endorsed John Kerry's peace efforts on Wednesday evening, saying in a statement carried on the Jordanian news agency that it hoped this could lead to a two-state solution. The statement said that the Arab League delegation in Amman, Jordan, affirmed, quote, its support for Kerry's great efforts to revive peace talks between Palestinian and Israeli sides and pointed out that the ideals put forward by Kerry before the committee provided the ground and the suitable environment to start negotiations, especially in new and important political, economic, and security issues. Don't forget, $4 billion is the carrot that John F. Kerry is dangling to the Palestinians. Also the release of a lot of their prisoners. And potentially, potentially more land. Of course they'll get more land. And that's a great concern. Uh, the League delegation expressed hope that this will lead to a launch of serious negotiations to address all final status issues to end the conflict and achieve a just and comprehensive peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis, which will bless the region with security, stability, and prosperity. The Bible says when they say peace and safety, then cometh sudden destruction. I'm going to cover that for you in my next video. I just want to get this breaking news to you. The delegation emphasized its commitment to the Arab Peace Initiative, stressing that any future agreement must be based on a two-state solution through the establishment of an independent Palestinian state on the lines, here it is, of the 4th of June, 1967, with a limited exchange of territory of the same value and size. So in other words, not exactly the 1967 border, but something with the same value and size, which I'm telling you is the 1949 green zone border that was carved out in the Armonist Agreement of 1949, which is what the EU is endorsing as the only lines that the EU, the European Union, is recognizing. That report came out yesterday. And then we have a report that Benjamin Netanyahu is saying, look, I didn't agree to the pre-1967 borders, but I am willing to talk peace, which means he agreed to something. If he didn't agree to something, John F. Kerry would not be running around with his hands in the air, proclaiming victory proclaiming amazing victory or some sort of compromise. So get ready, folks. And then you got Samantha Power, who may become the UN ambassador, who's so anti-Israeli. I mean, there's something biblical going on. And John Kerry may find himself, an old skull and bones guy from way back, might find himself in the middle of the biblical rest the biblical covenant signed with many people. Do you want to know what it says? It isn't just a peace agreement between Israel and Palestine. According to the Bible, it's a covenant. And here's what it says. 
in Daniel 9, 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He is not the Antichrist. He is just the one that confirms it. The Antichrist will be revealed when he walks into the temple of God before the worshipers of God and declares that he is God. That is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So let's read it again. And he shall confirm the covenant with many, not just Palestine, not just the Palestinians and the Israelis, but what? 22 Arab League nations and 35 Muslim nations, or 57 nations. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week or seven years. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, which means there will be a temple built, and the halfway point of seven years is three and a half years, or 42 months, which it says in Revelation. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Folks, something biblical. Now, I'm not talking about possible i'm telling you and the uh, uh, the announcement of these talks probably going to begin in sometime late august is remember obama is going to russia to meet with putin in a russian summit in september and the g20 summit is after that meeting so and the comet ison is coming and then you have the un meetings coming this fall and then, and then you've got the blood moons coming. Uh, and you've got the solar eclipse coming in 2014, 2015. And the last time you had these blood moons, you had significant situations develop in the 67 war. Before that, it was the 40, 1948, Israel becoming a nation. Before that, 1492. You know, so we have these, uh, these significant events happening whenever there's four blood moon cycles. Not on exact days but right in the vicinities. And it's very important that we watch and see what's taking place. Are you saved? Can I ask you a question? Yes, the water's going to turn blood like red. Nine waterways of the world has already turned blood red in the last two years, and we've been reporting it. We even wrote a book on it called Texas Blood Lake to help explain it for you. You can check it out on our website to help explain it to you, the how important the blood red water and the blood moons and the earthquakes play a major role in these times we're living in. And I'm writing a book right now called Jerusalem Jihad. What a time to release that book this fall right in the midst of what could be the historic and biblical covenant of Daniel 9.27. I'll be right back in just a moment. We're going to stay all over it because this is a huge milestone potential that would move you in biblical prophecy to another whole level. God bless. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Be born again.